Hi, I'm Lily Jackson, and in today's Rockler demo, I'm going to show you how to make these new wood and epoxy coasters. You can combine different wood and epoxy colors to have endless design options, and if you've never worked with epoxy before, it's a great way to start on a small scale. We'll be working with Rockler's new coaster molds. They're available in round and square, and they're made from silicone, so the cured epoxy easily releases from the mold. The first step is to choose wood pieces. I found this beautiful piece of curly babinga in our shop. The coaster molds are roughly half inch deep, so the wood pieces should be less than that to be covered with the epoxy. It's up to you what size and shape you want to cut your wood pieces. I chose to cut two pieces and have the live edges facing each other like a mini river table. Next, I need to coat the wood pieces with a penetrating epoxy to seal the wood pores and prevent bubbles from forming when they are submerged in the epoxy, and then set them aside to dry for 24 hours. Now that we've let these cure overnight, we're ready to mix and pour the epoxy. Since this is a small, shallow pour, we're going to use Alumilite Amazing Clear Cast for achieving the task of a water clear look. But the most important thing when choosing which type of epoxy to use is that it's intended for a shallow pour. Today I'm going to make two round coasters and two square coasters. And since they each need about three ounces of epoxy, I'm going to mix seven ounces and seven ounces in each cup just to have a little extra. This epoxy is mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio, so that makes it easy. I pour three and a half ounces of part A in the mixing cup and then three and a half ounces of B for a total of seven ounces. Next, I add some Mixol color tint. I'm going for a sea glass look with a slight tint on these coasters. A little tint goes a long way, so I'm careful to only add a drop or two and stir before adding. You can always add more, but you can't take it back. Stir thoroughly for a few minutes, scraping the sides to make sure everything gets mixed. These molds are made from silicone, so they won't stick permanently to the epoxy. But I found a light coat of release agent in the mold makes it even easier. I start by pouring about an eighth inch deep, enough to cover the bottom. I let it sit for about a minute, and then I torch the bubbles, which is the best part. And then I press in the wood pieces. Then I pour the rest of the resin in, stopping right at the top of the wood. The wood tends to float up, so I drove pin nails through scraps of wood to use as weights to hold the wood down in the mold. The key is to only have the tips of the pin nails touching the epoxy or they may get stuck. Also, a mold release sprayed on the nails doesn't hurt. And then I repeat the process on the other coasters. Welcome back. It's been about 30 hours since I poured the epoxy and it feels cured. Let's check it out. Now I pull off the weights and peel back the molds and remove the coasters. If the edges are rough, you can lightly sand off the sharp edge, but be careful not to sand the faces or will scuff and you'll have to go through a polishing process if you want them to be clear. I really love working with epoxy and now I have so many ideas of other objects I want to embed in these coasters. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a little something about working with wood, epoxy, and tints. I'm Lily Jackson with Rockler and Woodworkers Journal. Thanks for watching.